God, we thank you. Your Holy Spirit is here to teach us, to help us, to understand, to bring revelation, to bring us understanding that we might uh, be more complete in you, that we we would be more accurate, Lord, in, in, our, in our walk. The Bible talks about being uh, uh, walking circumspectly. That means to walk uprightly before you, not uh, slinking behind the shadows, but, Lord, walking uh, unashamed uh, in our obedience to your commands, to your word. So, Father God, we thank you for our study tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I have to say it's good to be standing here at the pulpit. Praise God. It's good to be back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we are going to begin a study, and I don't know how long it's going to take. Of course, next week we will be taking off because of our Harvest Festival. But it'll be for some weeks we will be studying the subject of spirit, soul, and body. And um, I almost talk about it. It's it's going to be uh, uh, spirit training, but spirit training that affects our soul. And, and, and affects our bodies. And we're going to actually start from the outside and work in, is how we're going to do it. We're going to start with our body tonight. And so I'm going to take my great artistic skills on this board. And those of you that can't see, you're blessed if you can't see it. <laughs> no, anyway, I want to be able to illustrate some things. And so I'm going to do my best. Glory to God. And then, yeah, here, here it comes. Well, here's, here's the hands. All right. <laughs> Praise God. And there's some legs down here. Okay. I'll put a smiley face. Now, it's, it's a male or female. It doesn't matter. You know, just, just give it a little, bit, a little bit of hair and a little bit of ears working here. All right. All right. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, it's a midriff thing. <laughs> okay, open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, and we're going to um, look at what the Bible says about this subject. Verse number 23, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, And the very God of peace sanctify you Holy, not H-O-L-Y, but W-H-O-L-L-Y. That means completely, that you be sanctified. Do you know what sanctified means? To be sanctified? It means to be set apart, separated, different. So God is saying, uh, 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 Paul in writing to the church is saying, by the Spirit of God, He's praying that God, the God of peace, would separate us wholly, would cleanse us and separate us wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So another way to think about this, this is saying that, and I take it as a prayer, is that, God would sanctify us, spirit, soul, and body. Us as a complete being. We're not just a body. We're not just a soul. We're not just a spirit. No, we are a three-part being. Just as God. See, we're, we were made in the image of likeness of God. God is a three-part being. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We, too, are a three-part being. And so it's, it's the prayer and desire of, of God. God's heart is that we learn to allow God to work in every part of our being, spirit, soul, and body. Now, this relationship we have with ourselves is to be a balance we are not to be in conflict with ourselves 
But what I find is much of the time people are in conflict. Their spirit wants to go one direction, their soul wants to go another direction, and perhaps their body wants to go another direction. And so there's uh, much confusion. Actually, there's strife. (laughs) Now, Paul describes there is a spiritual warfare that goes on, a striving that goes on in the fact that the only part of us that is saved is our spirit man. Let's just describe this now. You really are a spirit man that has a soul. And that soul is so connected to the spirit, you can't tell the difference. The only thing is the word, the word of God is the thing that divides it. And then those, those parts of us are contained in a physical body. And um, it, is, it is the physical body that we see. But this physical body is not totally us. Oh, it is us. But it's not the totality of us. What's interesting is you could cut our, you know, cut our body right down the middle and open it up and look for a soul or look for a spirit, and you won't find it. You know what you'll find? A bunch of guts and blood and everything else inside there. Body parts that God made so that we could function on this earth. He created these beings, praise God, these bodies. But the only part of us that got saved when we accepted Jesus as our Lord is our spirit man. And so I'm just going to draw a picture here. I'll draw it kind of like a heart with a little belly button. Um, This is the heart of man. Not the blood pump. That's just a muscle. No. No. The heart of man, the core of us, is our spirit man. The part that was born again. Within that heart, there's, it's, it's, a two-part, it's a two-parter. Kind of like an egg. You open up an egg, what happens? There's a yolk and the white. There's two, there are two parts. On the outside is a shell. That's kind of like us as a, our physical body. Our outside is the shell we see. But on the inside is the heart. You don't eat shell. I don't like eating shell. No, but the egg is good. Anyway, but but inside of us, the core of us is our heart made up of our spirit man and our soul. Of course, the soul is in the process of being saved, and that soul can be at odds with our spirit man. Um, I hadn't planned to go into... Let me just mention it because we'll go into more detail. But think of this. Our spirit man is the interface or the connection with the spiritual world. Our spirit man. With our spirit, we contact God. That's how our relationship with God is through our spirit man. It's not through our soul. It's not through our body. But it's through the spirit. God gave us a soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions to be the interface with our physical body, which our physical body is the interface with this natural world. So your soul works with your body. Your spirit works with the spiritual realm. And the spirit man should affect the other two parts of our being. Should. Doesn't mean it always does. But anyway, um, so think think of your soul. Your your soul is not something bad. Your mind, your will, your emotions aren't something bad. Those are things God gave us. Praise God. But today we want to focus on the physical body. That is our interface with this world, our interface with people. It is how we relate and minister to others is through our physical bodies. The shell, the outside. Some people describe these bodies as earth suits. They are. it's, It's how, if we don't have, if our earth suit stops working, if we rip a big hole in it, the blood comes out or whatever, we no longer have contact with this natural world. We'll leave the, the spirit and soul leave. 
All right. So the Bible, again, is telling us that it's God's desire that our whole being, spirit and soul and body, be sanctified, separated, and preserved unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, join me in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. You've heard this before, but I, I, I think it's important to keep hearing the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and reading verse 19. What? Don't you know that your body, your body, your physical body is the temple, the dwelling place, the sanctuary of the Holy God, the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God. Say that out loud. Glorify God. Glorify God. Where? In your body and in your spirit, which with this is describing a spirit, is the spirit of man, is the spirit and the soul. So really, he's saying you glorify God with your whole being. Hallelujah. So obviously, it is possible to glorify God in these earth suits, in these mud pies that we live in. Praise God. It is possible to glorify God in these bodies. Now, I'm going to say something, and then, and then I'll kind of clarify it after I'm saying it. Think of your body much like a car. It's a vehicle. Your car is a vehicle to get you things, get you places, right? A car isn't necessarily good or bad. It just does what it's, it's a, it's a, a machine. Well, in, in many respects, our bodies are like machines. God designed them to function on this earth. So, just like a car is not bad, it, it can be used for bad things. How many of you saw the video this week of the old man that he got upset because the motorcycle was passing, and he just drove his car right over in him, knocked, it, knocked the people right off. Unfortunately, they did not get severely injured, but he purposely drove, pulled his car over and knocked them off the motorcycle as they were passing. I mean, was the car bad? No, it was the person that did it. Just like the person that killed the police officer last night in New York. It wasn't the gun that was bad. It was the person using it. All right. So uh, the, the point I'm trying to make is, it, is that uh, these bodies are necessarily are not bad in and of themselves. It's how they can be used, which is directed by the, the soul of man. Because the, the, the soul of man is what has the interface with this physical body. And so the bodies, our bodies can be used for wrong and evil and everything else. Um, now, I'm going to clarify this by saying that, you know, in these bodies, the Bible says there is no good thing. In fact, the Scripture in the New Testament talks about even these vile bodies. Well, if you compare it to the glorified body that we're going to get in heaven, of course these things are vile. But i got to tell you, our bodies only do what we direct them to, the real us. We're responsible for what our bodies are doing because we are the ones in charge. The heart is in charge. Now, the only areas that I can see the bodies uh, have a need and a desire and, and a strong desire is these physical bodies have a, um, a fight or flight or a survival mentality. Try not feeding your body. What will happen? I mean, it'll start, it'll start talking to you. It, it'll start, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's how this thing works. I mean, it needs, it needs to be fed, right? I mean, that, that's just, that, that's, that's a physical thing that these bodies require. Now, there, there's also something else these physical bodies require, too, and that's sleep. 
If you, if you deny these bodies sleep, they don't work good. It's kind of like, you know, having a car and you don't maintain it right. It'll start breaking down. Well, that's what happens if we don't sleep. The other inherent thing that God gave us is to propagate or multiply. And that is the sexual desire. And it's okay to talk about that in church. God gave it to mankind. It's just He has, he has given parameters whereby that is to be operated in. Outside of that, it's sin which, which brings death. So, as far as I can see, there are those three things that the physical body has, has a, a demand for or a desire, um, and, it, and it's God-given. Uh, but everything else the body does is directed by the heart. Okay? Any questions? Any comments so far? Praise God. Say, oh, man, he's talking about sexual desires in church. Ooh. Well, well, you think about it. What, what, are, what are some of the, the, the sins that beset people, but the three things that I'm talking about? You can sin against your body by not taking care of it, by not resting it. And not feeding it properly. Feeding it junk. Right. Fasting. Right. Right. So again, you, you think about these three these three main areas: the physical body uh, uh, desires and has need of. Those are the very areas that, like gluttony, oh. right? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know, just just think about it. A, glut, a, a, a glutton is is in the same category as an alcoholic, in that the food is a drug, and it's and it's and they can't say no to it. Okay, the Bible, when it talks about gluttony, is talking about you know being a wine bibber and you know basically being an alcoholic, and so you know. We can we can allow those things to get out of balance. Food food is not bad, but too much food is, because uh, you know just carrying a, an extra twenty thirty pounds can severely affect your health. And why do we have such a serious problem with diabetes in America today? Is because of our diet and and weight. That is that is a, a serious issue. <laughs> I mean, I, it's wrong. I know it's wrong because I want the, 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 the gravy and the, and the dressing. And the <laughs> oh, man, the sweet potatoes with the marshmallows on top. And oh, my goodness, with all the butter on those rolls. You know what, sister? We, I don't think we need to come into condemnation. We, we can enjoy food, but it all needs to be in moderation. All right needs to be in moderation that's that is uh, important and and yeah well we're going to get to that scripture in a little bit but um food food should not dominate us all right we we need to be in control of that just like we should be in control of our sexual appetite as well i mean it needs to be put under subjection and and so um sure Sure, you can ask the Lord to, to help you. Praise God. 
You know, a few potato chips isn't bad, but sitting down eating the whole bag, that's a problem. Praise God. Yes, honey. Yeah, see, we're not glorifying God when we are worshiping food. That, that, that does not glorify God. It does not glorify God that our bodies are sickly and weak and, and uh, having physical problems because of overeating or eating poorly. And I have to tell you, and, I, and I've been guilty and I'm really working on it, but fast food, junk food is just that. It's junk it's high in calories, high in fat, and it will affect you. And so don't think you can come to church and ask God to heal you of something that you brought on yourself. He will not stop the, the law of sowing and reaping. We have to repent. We, we can repent. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to... Yes. If we can repent and get on the road of not giving place to that, then he can bring healing and our bodies can begin to heal themselves as well. Okay? Um, but just because you like those greasy 99 cent taco at Jack in the Box and keep eating them and eating them and eating them. God's not going to wink at it and say, well, it's okay. I know you can't control yourself. No, no, that's, that's not how it works. See, these bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we need to really work at being good stewards over these bodies. And that includes, like I said, the three... I see your hand. I, the, I, uh, these three main areas of, of rest, of eating... And sexual things. Okay. Yes. Right, right. Well, and we have to admit it, and it's been said for years and years that, you know, we, we as the church and as a whole, we've tolerated the sin of, of gluttony, but, but we haven't tolerated the sin of drunkenness, meaning, meaning, you know, people come in drunk to church and everything else. You know, that's not something that's, that's accepted, but but we've we've accepted uh, this other. And again, the point is that we we are the temple of the Holy Ghost and we need to really work at glorifying God in our bodies. Hallelujah. Now I tell you, I love those chili rano burritos. I mean, I, I mean, there's some, there's some good food out there that's not necessarily that so good for me. But if I just not have so much of it just once in a while. You know, or, or dessert once in a while. But if you're having ice cream and cake every single night, dear Lord. Yes, sister. You raised your hand. Okay, no, you. Well, someone won't desire help until they admit they have a problem. And so the best thing to do is pray for that person. And if the Spirit of God moves on you in their presence to, to talk to them about it, 
you know, I would obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. But uh, people have to come face to face with that they're out of control in their lives. And, and that is controlling them and is keeping them from a relationship with God. But just like any sin, any situation, God can deliver. God can deliver the alcoholic, the drug addict. He can deliver the, the, the uh, person that's hooked on food, hooked on sex. I mean, God can bring deliverance. Um, but these, these bodies, we are to strive to have them be sanctified. And the primary thing that drives these bodies, other than the three areas we've talked about, is what our soul is telling it to do. You know, my arm just didn't raise up on its own. No, I, yeah, through my mind, I said, okay, left arm, raise up, wiggle your fingers. You know, it's being directed. And so our soul man, that's why it's so important, we'll get to it, but this soul man needs to be then directed by the spirit man so that what comes out through the body will glorify God in line with the Word of God. And see, that the problem with most Christians is they're just, they're just all goofed up. Their, their spirit and soul and body aren't working together. They're in conflict. And that's why you can see people come to church, Oh, praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Glory to God! And they go out the next day and they're out, out sleeping and, and drinking and, and partying and, and everything else. And they come back to church, Oh, I feel bad about that. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! And then they go back to it. Well, their spirit man wants to worship God. But they haven't taken the word of God and renewed their mind and, and changed their thinking to a point that they control their body and tell it what to do. Well, what does Paul say? Let's go to that right now. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. It's a good point right now to say this. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. You know, we can't say the devil made me do it. In this, I'm going to start reading at verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Know ye not that they which run a race, they all run the race, but one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. That means in life we should do our best. We should strive to be the best that we can be. Not competing against other people, but competing against ourselves and using the word of God as our measure. Hallelujah. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things, meaning he, he works at self-control. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. It does sound familiar. <laughs> Someone that preached on crowns recently. Praise God. I therefore run, not uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beats the air. But this is the fight. This is the run. This, this is what I'm doing. I keep my body under. I bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Meaning, people are watching your body. They can't see your heart. They can't see the good intentions of your heart. They can't see that. They can't see the Word of God that's hidden in your heart. They can't see that. No, what they're seeing is, what's going on on the outside? What are we doing with our bodies? What are we letting come out of our mouth? How are we conducting ourselves? That's what people see. That's why Paul said, I keep my body under so that when I preach to people, they don't say, you hypocrite, we saw you doing this and this and this. You know, you, you say, don't be a glutton, and I saw you go five times through the buffet, Paul. Or Paul, you say, don't commit fornication and adultery. I saw you go to the red light district. And, and, and I didn't hear you preaching to those ladies there. Huh? No. No, people are watching our bodies. That's why Paul said, I keep my body under. 
And by the way, there's no vacations from that. It's not something we just do part-time or on Sunday. No, it is a full-time job. And you know what? We will fall short, but when we fall short, we should learn from it. Praise God. Repent. Get under the blood. Get it under the blood and, and, and not give place to that again. Praise God. What's that? Don't hit that snooze. That's right. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. But I keep my body under. Bring it into subjection. It, our body's in it. It's not really us. These are our temporary dwelling places. I mean, yes, it is us in that right here on this earth. This is the only one we get. That's why we better take the best care we can of it. Okay? But there's something coming that's glorious. In fact, let's look at that. We have a few more minutes. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse uh, 42, I believe. It says here, uh, it's talking about the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. Our bodies are sown in dishonor but raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it's raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body or a glorified body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Hallelujah. So at that day, when we meet the Lord in the air, these bodies will be changed, the Bible says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And we will receive our glorified bodies. Now, what's interesting to think about is, those that have died in Christ since the Lord's resurrection, they're in the presence of God, but they don't have their bodies. I don't know exactly what that means, because the Bible says, when Jesus comes, the dead in Christ will rise first. Meaning, meaning, those spirit beings in heaven are going to come down and get these bodies that come up out of the graves and they will receive their glorified bodies. I, I, so I don't know the differentiation in heaven. I, I can't explain it. But obviously in Scripture it's true that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. Just think about it. Even those people that were eaten by big sharks and fish and, and were, their, their molecules were spread out all over the ocean. God is going to bring, wherever those are at, God is going to bring those together and cause a glorified body. Those that have had their ashes spread all over, anywhere and anywhere, God's going to bring it back together. Praise God. But those are incorruptible bodies. We're dealing with these Corruptible bodies that need to be put under subjection. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Praise God. Okay, so we just differentiated spiritual body and physical body. And now let's close up by looking at Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I hope this is helping you tonight. Amen. You know, without a real clear understanding of spirit, soul, and body, it's hard to apply the Word of God uh, because the Word of God addresses different parts of our being in instruction some instruction in the word is to our spirit man well all of it's to our spirit man but some of it's to our soul and some of it's dealing with the body and if you don't rightly divide it understand it and apply it in your life it it, it won't work like it's intended unfortunately most christians don't understand this at all they don't understand their spirit man they don't understand they need to do something about their soul which will then cause their bodies to line up with the Word of God. All right, Romans. Yeah, yeah, they're just. Right, right. Did you find Romans 12, 1 yet? I think it's up there. Makes it easy. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. The word beseech is a very strong word. Okay. 
It's not a suggestion. It's a, a strong get-in-your-face <laughs> type implication. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, meaning H-O-L-Y. Sanctified, separated, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It's not unreasonable for God to expect us to present our bodies to Him because Jesus presented His body for us on the cross. It's not unreasonable for God to expect us to do something about these bodies. Bring it into subjection. To co command it. Hey, I know you want to go through that buffet the tenth time. No. Sometimes I have to tell my body it wants to sleep in. You need to get up. You got to talk to yourself. The Bible says we're to talk to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart unto the Lord. And a part of that is talking to our body and our soul when it doesn't want to. And no, you're going to obey the Word of God. No, you're going to keep your mouth shut. Huh? Praise God. You know, getting back on the subject of food, you know, when food has control over your life, the best way to deal with it is to fast. Tell your body, guess what? You're shut off. I'm cutting you off. Praise God. Yeah, it'll, 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 straighten, it'll straighten out. Praise God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present a presentation of our body needs to be done. How often do we do that? Every day. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, take up my cross. That relates to this scripture right there. Take up that cross. That's presenting our bodies. Putting it basically on the sacrifice to God. Not physically on the cross. Jesus already did that. No. But we're saying no to self and yes to God. Hallelujah. Those are true disciples that will, will deny themselves. Take up the cross to follow Jesus. Praise God. All right, my friends, we're wrapping things up. We are, again, a three-part being, spirit, soul, and physical body. God has called you and I to be stewards of these physical bodies. We're not to abuse them. We're to use them. Huh? And if we've abused them, we need to repent. I wrote an article that's being uh, distributed at AFCM starting tomorrow to the AFCM Southwest ministers. And one of the things that I wrote about, I was, I was writing about this subject, and the thing that I said was that I have seen more tragedy and trouble happen to ministers that have allowed themselves to get tired and worn out because they have not gotten enough rest and sleep i've i've seen i've seen falling into sin i've seen uh divorce i've seen death sickness churches blow up because the ministers were so busy trying to help people that they burned themselves up. Well, Paul talked about that in 1 Corinthians. He said, even though you give your body to be burned, it doesn't profit anything without love. You can't keep abusing your body. It needs a minimum of seven hours of sleep for most people. Maybe even eight or nine. 
It needs that to heal and to re recover. It needs that. People going two, three hours, that's all they're getting. And they're thinking they're doing something great for the Lord. Guess what? Something will give. Something will break. God designed these bodies. And we are not to abuse them. And so, we need to be, again, good stewards of this physical body. Hallelujah. Now, I, I challenge all of us. Because I know we all can do better in our stewardship. Let the Lord talk to you about some steps that you can take in dealing with this physical body so that it will be, um, how do I need to say it? So that it will be easier for you to get about and do things. That it won't be, what's that? Yeah, to be able to finish the race. Praise God. There's things that we can do. Again, it really starts with rest and diet. Well, and the other thing. Whew. Exercise, yes. Exercise is, is tied into that with, with diet. But the other thing I was just thinking about is they've proven that a high percentage, uh, it's, it's probably more than 75%, of sickness and disease comes because of unforgiveness. Now, that's getting into the soul, man, but it does affect the physical, physical body. And so uh, the stewardship, we, we do need to rest our bodies. We need to exercise our bodies, whether it's, whether it's walking, whether it's riding a bike, whether it's going to the gym and lifting weights, all, you know, all of, all of those things. Um, the, the Bible tells us that uh, bodily exercise profits, it's profitable. Now, it's for a short time you got to keep doing it. You don't exercise one week and it lasts the rest of the 51 weeks of the year. No, it profits for a short period of time. But spiritual, but spiritual exercise, spiritual uh, effort, it, it's eternal. That's what that scripture is talking about. Praise God. All right, so I believe the Lord is just trying to help us. Um, one, one of the purposes of, of, of me sharing... Uh, this to ministers is I see entirely too many ministers that are are uh, are this big. I'm I mean they're they're asking they're asking for a heart attack or stroke. And unless something changes, they will go prematurely. I, I, I'm I'm not speaking a you know a death sentence. It's just, you reap what you sow. And so, we have to start where we are. Praise God. You know, if you just took off a pound a month, that'd be 12 pounds in a year. If you don't do anything, guess what? You probably will even gain a couple of pounds in a year. We could all, we could all take off a pound a month. Dear Lord. What, two pounds would be 24 Hallelujah. Good stuff. All right. You had your hand raised earlier. I missed you. Do you remember what it was? You can ask it. It's okay. Well, that's not scriptural. The Bible, the Bible says very clearly, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some people believe in soul sleep or pe people just, they, they hang out here and so forth. No, I, I, I believe what the Word of God says. And, uh, I mean, you, you can't convince someone if they want to believe that, they can believe what they want. I'd rather believe the Bible. Yes, brother. Uh, 
therefore exempt, that's therefore exempt for the congregation. They should be said exempt for the congregation for them to follow their way of the temple and living. Yeah. And and you know what? We need to pray for people that are dealing with that. Yeah. It's it, it's uh you know, it's it's an addiction like anything else. Like the same uh, like you said, um like you say a glut. Yeah. Some people some people are gluttons. They have uh, a way of controlling it. Well, and you think about it, I mean food can be very comforting. <laughs> it can, it can, it can, it can be a, a thing that you know. Hey, this is my thing, and I enjoy it. And don't mess with me, you know. And uh, but see, that's that's kind of, kind of the trap there too. That's that's a trap because the devil comes to what seek whom he may devour. He comes to first to steal, kill, and destroy. Anybody want to take a picture of this before I r- let go of this Rembrandt here? All right, praise God. Oh, you want a picture? Praise God, sister. You can you can come take a picture of that. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the instruction of righteousness tonight. Father God, may we take these things, Lord, we've heard today, not to be in a condemning way, but, Lord, that it be instruction, that we, we take it as it's intended to help us, Lord, to be um, sanctified, holy, uh, spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, everyone. We're dismissed.